Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Today's video is once again sponsored by Audible. You can start listening with a 30 day Audible trial. Get one audiobook and unlimited Audible original monthly downloads absolutely free. Just visit audible.com slash jingles or text jingles to 500 500. This month I've mostly been listening to, it will probably come as absolutely no surprise, Yet another audiobook by the fantastic naval historian James D. Hornfisher. Last time I recommended you all give his Neptune's Inferno a try. This month it's his audiobook version of The Fleet at Flood Tide. The story of America at total war in the Pacific during 1944 and 1945. It's as good as Neptune's Inferno and I cannot recommend it enough. And don't forget as well as unlimited access to Audible Originals, which I've mostly been taken advantage of by listening to, amongst other things, Stephen Fry's Victorian series, you also get one free audiobook credit every month. And the only real problem with that is that after a couple of months you're going to have run out of James Hornfisher's audiobooks to listen to, but don't worry, he is writing another one right now. I personally can't wait to start listening to that one. Seriously, I do not know a single person to whom I have recommended James Hornfisher's audiobooks who has not thoroughly enjoyed them. If you have the slightest interest in naval history, and well I'm sure most of you do or you wouldn't be here in the first place, you owe it to yourself to give James Hornfisher's work a try. And if you head to audible.com slash jingles and use the code jingles or just text jingles to 500 500 you can get started absolutely free with the audiobook of your choice today. By a lucky coincidence, the ship that no the other left here is sailing in this uh, domination battle, the Miyoko actually features in James Hornfisher's The Fleet at Flood Tide. This ship had one hell of a service career in World War II. It fought in the invasion of the Philippines, the Battle of the Java Sea, the Battle of the Coral Sea, the Battle of Midway, the Solomon Islands Campaign, the Battle of the Philippine Sea and the Battle of the Later Gulf. Uh, where it received so much damage that it was basically written off and only used as an anti-aircraft battery for the remainder of the war. Actually, now that I come to think of it, if, if it fought in the Solomons, which is basically the Guadalcanal campaign, then it would have also have been featured in Hornfisher's earlier book, Neptune's Inferno. That man gets around, doesn't he? <laughs> anyway... No, the other left here is something of a World of Warships veteran, although he doesn't have anything that isn't Japanese or American and higher than around tier 7 or 8, and the reason for that is he hasn't actually played this game in about four years. So the last time he played World of Warships, there were only Japanese and American ships available, and the Miyoko is about as far as he got down the Japanese tech tree. He's back though, and given the game another go. So remember, what you're watching here is somebody who basically hasn't played the game since it was in open beta, more or less. So try to imagine this from his perspective. The carriers work completely differently to how he remembers. So that's probably going to come as something of a surprise. Well then again, maybe not. I mean, again, imagine if you hadn't played the game in four years. You come back and you think, right, let's jump into the Cleveland. Wait, why is my Cleveland tier 8 now? <laughs> Um, okay, fine, and then you get attacked by a carrier, so you open up with defensive AA, and it just basically doesn't do anything. <laughs> that might come as something of a surprise, but if you're playing a Japanese cruiser that wouldn't really expect to make much of a dent into an airstrike in the first place, you might not actually notice that there have been some changes. You might be wondering to yourself, what the hell is HMS Monarch anyway? And you might also be thinking, wow, this ship sure takes a lot of damage from 8-inch uh, high explosive shells, doesn't it? And yes, it does. Well, he's obviously a quick learner, and he's gotten to grips with the whole reinforced AA sector mechanic, and he has actually managed to shoot an aircraft down, although that may just be lulling him into a false sense of security, because that was one of the fighter consumables dropped by the enemy carrier, and those things basically have no health. They're free air kills. He has managed to get himself spotted here by sliding out from around the side of the island, and he is now... or he was... actually no, the monarch was pointing the guns right at him, and he's turning them in the other direction, so... I mean, he'd angled up, but the monarch was firing high explosive, so it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. But the Monarch's clearly going for some low-hanging fruit here, possibly the T-61. 
just inside the cap circle, slightly up there to the northeast, which, let's face it, if you're in a monarch armed with 15 inch guns and high explosive shells, the T61 is a much, much bigger threat to you at that kind of range. But it looks like the monarch feels he's no longer under threat from the T61's torpedoes as much as he is from No the Other Left's 8 inch high explosive. So that was an armor piercing salvo, and that kind of hurt. But it's not going to save the Monarch, who is probably going to burn to death. There he is, and there's an arsonist award already. Anyway, Monarch down, what's next? Oh, he's getting shot at by the Helena, who's firing 6 inch armor piercing at an angled heavy cruiser. That's barely going to scratch. Hang on a minute. Torpedo bombers just overflew. Oh, here they come. No, I think we're good. Looks like the Ryujo dropped those way too early. The Ryujo, however, unusually, is actually going to prove to be the least of No the Other Left's problems, because as well as the Helena, there are two, count them, two Massachusetts closing in on the other side of that island. He gets the torpedoes away. Don't forget, the Miyoko has two sets of torpedo launchers on each side, although it's only three torpedoes per launcher. Also, don't forget, no, the other left has been away from this game for a very, very long time, so he probably has no idea about the Massachusetts secondaries. Although he's been around long enough to know what tier 8 American battleships can be like as far as the 16-inch guns are concerned. So he's probably not aware that the Massachusetts 16-inch rifles aren't quite as accurate as the North Carolinas, but well, at these kind of ranges, they don't need to be. Ooh, that could have been a lot worse. I mean, he was angling away, but it wasn't nearly enough at the point at which that first Massachusetts fired. He's actually managed to set a fire there. And I'm not seeing the Massachusetts secondaries firing. Does that guy have manual secondaries and he hasn't actually selected the target? I mean, yeah, no, the other left's inside the smoke screen, but he's visible because he's a cruiser and he's firing his guns from within the smoke screen and the Massachusetts is just way too close. Oh, he's lost the torpedo tube. Not that it matters, he's already gotten the torpedoes away from that side. Is that second Massachusetts coming around the corner? Is he is he going to fall for the old torpedoes around the corner of the island gag? No, I don't think he is. He's, he's not moving quickly enough. But he is going to poke out from around the side of the island. High explosive loaded. Might be a good idea to think about switching to armor piercing once you've fired these at this kind of range. Going for the bows. Oh, 7,000 damage and a fire. Very, very nice. He has switched to the armor piercing, but it, is he slowing down? Is he stopping? No, he is still coming. Ah, T-61 torpedoes. And his guns aren't even pointing in this direction. Then again, he's probably trying to kill the T-61. But, well, that ship has sailed by now, mate. <laughs> that's, uh, that's shutting the barn door after the horse has already bolted. The T-61 has done the damage. It's the Miyoko that's going to kill you. Bit of a brown alert moment here as the other Massachusetts comes around the corner. But all of the damage that no the other left takes here is first from the enemy carrier's rocket attack planes and the Massachusetts secondaries. And it's not an insignificant amount of damage. But the Massachusetts could and would have blown him out of the water if he'd had a 16 inch armor piercing loaded as he came around the corner and no, the other left pulled that emergency turn to get out of the way, and also get his torpedoes away. So why didn't the Massachusetts come around the corner with its 16-inch armor piercing loaded? In fact, wh why did it come around the corner at all? Well, to answer the first question, it didn't come around the corner with 16-inch AP loaded in its guns because it had just fired those guns at the friendly Normandy, just a couple of kilometers to the south of where no, the other left is right now. As for the question of why it came around the corner at all, where it could be shot at not just by the Normandy it was exchanging fire with, but also the Arizona, the Richelieu, and of course, no, the other left's Miyoko. I think the only logical explanation for that one is... And if you can think of a better explanation, be my guest. Oh, it looks like the Helm has just realised he's about to start getting shot at by six enemy ships. And no, the other left. Seriously, what did that island ever do to you? That island is the best and most loyal friend you've had in this game. Please, stop shooting it with your 8-inch armor piercing shells. I thought the Helena 
realised the trouble he was in and was turning around to get the hell out of there, but no, it turns out the Helena's best plan when facing anything up to six enemy ships, three of whom were battleships, was to just continue sailing broadside on right in front of all of them. Although it was the carrier who finished him off with armour-piercing bombs. Now, AP loaded. Island are no longer in the way. Not the best choice of ammunition to be using against an angled Arizona, but it's what he had loaded, so that's what he's shooting. Switches to the high explosive instantly, obviously. And the AP basically does nothing. Three shatters, two ricochets. Now that smokescreen over there could be hiding a Shinonomi and or a Leander. And oh, there's the Shinonomi. He switched to the high explosive, anticipating setting the Arizona on fire. But this works just as well for the Shinonomi too, and his engine's been knocked out. The Leander's just popped up, torpedo spotted well in advance. Leander's sunk, the T-61's obviously running his hydro. Looks like the Shinonomi, who is no longer on fire and no longer has a disabled engine, has used his damage control. But that salvo, as well as doing some damage, has knocked his engine out again. The Arizona... Dead. <laughs> that just leaves, by the way, the Shinonomi and the enemy carrier. But what's this? I mean, we know the Shinonomi's engine was disabled again, but why is he slowing to a stop? He doesn't seem to have the last stand skill. It's a two-point skill. What else could you possibly pick from destroyer skills at tier two that's more valuable than last stand? Answers on a postcard to the usual address because I don't have any suggestions. And that kill on the Shinonomi ended the match. The only reason the entire enemy team did not get wiped out without no the other left's team suffering a single casualty is because the Shinonomi kill reduced the enemy team to zero points and the match ended. Otherwise that Ryujo would have died too. And no, the other left's team didn't suffer a single loss. That was a pretty monumentally humiliating outcome for the enemy team. And not a bad result with over 2,000 base experience for no, the other left and the Miyoko in his return to World of Warships after being away for the best part of the last four years. Turns out, He's still got it. And it is nice to see somebody back at the game after such a long absence. And they're still kicking ass and taking names and having fun. And I hope you had fun watching this video too, because that is it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.